Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a hydraulic steering rack and how it works to turn the wheels on your car. Now the steering rack's responsibility is to take the rotational motion coming from the steering wheel here and turn it into translational motion that can turn the wheel. You can see as I rotate the steering wheel how the steering rack moves to push the wheel. The main components of the steering rack include your input shaft, your control valve for the hydraulics, the steering rack itself, the inner tie rods as well as the outer tie rods that connect to the knuckle. Now this is the universal joint where it connects to the input shaft. I'm just going to remove this pinch bolt. There's two 17 millimeter nuts that hold the steering rack onto the body. This is where the outer tie rod connects from the steering rack to the knuckle. Now the castle nut is stuck so I'm going to grind this tie rod off. And now I can free the tie rod from the knuckle. Now with all the lines free, I can remove the steering rack. So here I've got the rack and pinion assembly removed from the vehicle. This is the rack housing that has the piston inside that moves back and forth. This is the high pressure line and this is the low pressure return line. This is the power steering gear assembly. Then we've got the inner tie rod followed by the outer tie rod. Just a quick overview of what's going on here. We've got the control valve housing here, the steering rack that sits inside, then a bunch of oil seals, bushings, and stoppers before it goes out to the tie rods on either side. So this here is where the inner tie rod joins to the steering rack assembly. Now this rack assembly moves back and forth. That's why we have this bellowed boot here. And this allows some articulation for the suspension to travel up and down. So this is the inner and outer tie rod assembly. Over here we have what looks like a forge piece that's laminated over a ball stud. And we've got the long shaft here that leads to these threads where this jam nut is. And this will control the toe in and toe out alignment. An exploded view of the control valve with a bunch of O-rings. We've got an oil seal, a gasket and a bearing that goes inside the control valve housing. We've got the rack housing over here, your lock nut at the bottom and the rack guide at the back. This bolt here is the rack housing cap. I'm going to break that loose. And with the nut removed, you can actually see there's a bearing on the inside there. Next, I'm going to use my 19 millimeter hexagon socket to remove this rack guide nut. And with the rack guide nut removed, you can see here, this is the guide. There's two 12 millimeter bolts on either side that hold the control valve housing to the rack. Now I can remove the control valve assembly from the rack. And you can see this here is the pinion gear and the input shaft that spins the pinion gear. Now I've got my brother's old sock, I'm just going to use it to clean off the grease from the pinion gear here. And then over on this side we've got a cylinder end stopper that's held in by this wire here. So I'm just going to remove this wire here. I can then remove the cylinder end stopper which is this piece right here. And now this black thing that goes around is the oil seal. Now when your mechanic is telling you that your steering rack is leaking, it's actually this bushing right here and this o-ring that's leaking. Now this is the rack, it's pretty much a steel piece of hollow tubing that's threaded in either ends for the tie rods. In the middle here we have what forms the piston around the cylinder. And then we've got the teeth here off to the left side that engage with the pinion gear on an angle to take the rotational motion of the steering wheel and turn it into the translational motion of the rack. And just to show you how this works here, according to the control valve's input and output, it'll determine which side of the cylinder will get the fluid. Now on this side of the cylinder, if it's filled up with fluid, it will tend to push against this piston head here, which will push the rack this way, assisting it to move it in this direction, which will turn the wheels to the left. Now when you turn the wheels in the opposite direction, this control valve will reverse that flow and push fluid into this side of the cylinder, and that will push the piston this way, which will push the rack in this direction, giving you assist and making it easier for you to turn the steering wheel to the right. So this here is a control valve assembly, and it's actually the heart of the power steering rack. It basically takes the input fluid, and according to the input direction of the shaft is moving, it will direct it to the correct side of the rack to give you assist in that direction. And we can see this control valve assembly. And the inside of this housing, we have this really cool roller bearing. So this is the control valve housing. We've got the hydraulic lines that run from the car on this side and from the rack on this side and you can see the holes drilled on the inside there where it meshes with the control valve itself. So if you take a closer look at how this control valve is set up inside of its housing here you can see that the high pressure line corresponds to this larger hole here where fluid can enter here. The low pressure line that goes back to the reservoir will get fluid from over here near the top and then we've got the two left side and right side lines that take fluid from this side and this side here respectively. Now there's actually a snap ring here that I'm going to remove and then now I can pull off this bushing housing here. When the input shaft rotates relative to the output shaft they're not exactly directly linked. Inside of here there's a little torsion bar that'll twist. So if I take a pair of pliers and vice grips and I try to move this you can see how the input shaft is moving relative to the output shaft. See that? And that's the torsion bar moving on the inside there. So now I'm going to chop this open to see if we can look at that torsion bar. So now as I open this up here, you can see the torsion bar in the middle here that's connected to the input shaft and the torsion bar there that's connected to the output shaft. Now the way this thing works here is we have the input shaft here that turns with the steering wheel. 
and because of the friction of the wheels the pinion will have a tendency to stay still and that will cause a relative motion between the input shaft and the output shaft as the torsion beam inside of here twists. Now the torsion beam will never rotate so much that it can snap off and that's because the input shaft here has a rectangular shape that's pressed into the outer shaft and it's got this plastic bushing around it so this can only rotate the torsion beam a certain amount before it'll engage and rotate the pinion. Now the way the valving works is we got the input shaft here that sits inside of this collar that has the holes in it for the hydraulics. Now the collar is locked to the pinion gear through this little pin over here that it slides into. Now the hydraulics and the control valve will put fluid into the center part of this collar here which will fill up the input shaft here. Now when the input shaft here experiences a relative rotation to the output shaft that's due to the torsion beam twisting you can see that this hole here will slightly move and will align with this output hole here therefore it'll take the fluid from here and redirect it out here to go to one side of the rack. And you can see here from the hole spacing that it only takes a very tiny amount of twist for the fluid to be redirected to either this hole or this hole depending on the direction. Now if there's no torque applied to the input shaft, such as you're going in a straight line, the left side and right side of the rack are going to have equal pressures. And all of the pressure that's coming from the power steering pump will actually flow through the input shaft here and come out of this collar. And then it will go into the control valve body on that hole over there where it'll exit out and go back to the reservoir. So just to clarify things here, this collar is represented by the outer ring on my diagram and the input shaft here is represented by this inner ring on the diagram. Now in the neutral position, fluid will flow into the center part here, fill up these channels in the center of the input shaft and it will flow along the cylinder back out to the reservoir. Now if the steering wheel is turned to the right, this torsion bar here is going to turn slightly to the right this way, allowing hydraulic fluid to come in from the inlet, squeeze through this valve and go back out to the left side of the rack which will turn the wheels to the right. Now you can really see how inefficient hydraulic power steering is because you've got the pump turning off of the engine all the time, providing pressure to the control valve and if you're not steering, all that pressure is just going back to the reservoir and getting wasted. Alright kids, now it's time to chop something open. So now I'm just going to pop the ball stud through. Now I'm just going to pop off that plastic bearing. And you can see inside it's got that spherical shape. And now you can see that the ball stud actually sits in a housing with this oval shape which only allows it to swing in this direction according to the suspension movement of the vehicle. Now I'm going to chop open the inner tie rod to see what's inside. You can see here it's got a plastic bearing on the inside that I can remove. So the inner tie rod consists of this ball stud here. It's got the housing here. And then we've got these two plastic bearings. Now in general plastic is a pretty good wear material until you get sand or grit inside of them and then it starts to really wear down and make the tie rod become loose. And that's pretty much all the components that go into making a steering rack. So the next time you crank that steering wheel take a second to think about all the components that are doing their job to make turning that wheel a lot easier.